Hello, Pray and Share Warriors. I hope that y'all are doing great today. It is the last day of 2021, so it is time to close that door. I thought I was going to be doing something else tonight, but they changed their dates on me. But that's okay, because on Sunday, I'm going to be watching Passion 2022. can't believe it's going to be... 2022 but anyway I thought we would just uh, talk about this year and how this year went and that we would discuss next year and I have my book down here my devotion book which I wanted to read and introduce to you something that God has called me to do in the morning. So I'm going to be doing a video in the mornings also. It's going to be much shorter. It's not going to have as much content. So if your mornings are freer than your afternoons, then come and have coffee with me. This is not coffee. This is my coffee cup, but it's water. But come and have coffee with me, and we will do Jesus always and we will start tomorrow which is the first of January so let me let me get my book and I'll be right back so this morning I woke up at um, 3 30ish and I don't know what I was thinking about, but God has been asking me to expand my ministry into other um, other social medias like Instagram and other things. And also to do more or be more consistent. And so he laid this name on me, Coffee Treasures, so we can have coffee. And we can talk about the treasures in God's Word. And so this is the book that I'm going to be starting on January 1st. And I'm going to have to um, redo my quiet time, which this is part of my quiet time, my personal quiet time with God, is reading this and then looking at the scriptures that go with it. And uh, this is by Sarah Young. This is not anything that I've written. I want to reach out to her and see if she is okay with me sharing this. I never sit down and read this without saying what it is and showing the book and showing that it's not what I wrote, <laughs> that I'm just reading this and I read it because I love it so much. And I love it so much that I am giving it to other people I gave it to other people for Christmas. I haven't delivered all of them yet, but I have them that I ordered. Okay, so we're going to pray first because this is pray and share. So we pray before we share, but I'm sharing with you what I read today on December the 31st today for my devotion time and then when I do Seth's, Seth has a teenage volume of this and so we do the same devotion. His is a little bit simpler and more pared down but anyway I think it's so good for him to have a devotional and we read a Bible story too. But let's pray. God we just praise you and thank you for all that you are and for all that you do. We just thank you for all the good ideas that you give us, God. You are on your throne and you are in control. You are the great Jehovah. You are the great I Am. There is nothing that you do not know, God. You know everything. You know our coming in and our going out. You know everything that we do, God. And you love us the same. You're always waiting to forgive us when we do mess up. Thank you for being our creator, our sustainer, our protector, our provider. Thank you for being our shelter in the storm. Thank you for um, 
being our strength and our refuge also. God, you are miraculous and mighty and powerful, and you are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness according to your word, according to your truth. And God, you are also loving and kind and compassionate and caring and faithful and trustworthy. You're forgiving. You want none to perish. You want you are patient. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us as your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. God, we just pray for the lost. We just pray, God, that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. God, we just also pray for the prodigals to come home, to return to you to repent and to be reconciled. God, with all the things going on, it just looks like evil is rampant. But I feel like, God, you're shaking us. You're trying to wake us up. You're trying to wake up the people that are asleep. And God, we just pray that you would be with these people that have lost loved ones. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them, and we pray for the injured, God. We just pray that you would heal their bodies, and we pray for the ones, God, that survived some of these great tragedies that go on every day. God, we just pray that you would give them healing emotionally, physically, and spiritually. We pray that these things, as awful as they are, will draw people to you, God. We also pray for other people that have lost loved ones. There's been a lot of loss over the past few years, God. We just pray that you would uh, give them peace, comfort, and strength. We pray for all of our friends that are sick. We just pray, God, that you would help them to heal. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, okay, pray and share, warriors. I wish I could rem I mean, last year is such a blur. It just seems like, um, I don't know, it's a blur. I can't remember January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. I mean, I can remember what happened this month. This was a pretty good month. I got to see... A lot of family um, lost some love, lost a loved one last year, lost another one this year. Um, I haven't been to any concerts since 2019, so that's not a highlight. I have watched some things on TV. It was maybe a highlight of my day, but um, I did. We are getting rid of some of our property, so we're selling property, so I guess that's a good thing. It's going to be less taxes we have to pay. Um, I don't know. I guess we survived COVID. We all had COVID in January, so we survived that. And after surviving that, that is just what made me just go, you know what, I'm not living in fear. I'm just going to go out and do the things that I want to do. What I'm going to work on is building up my immune system and taking care of my body, exercising, taking multivitamins, um, eating yogurt, doing the things to build up my immunity. And so that's kind of what I decided to do. I have lost... Um, about eight to nine pounds that I gained last year that I had already lost, but I still have another nine to ten to eleven to lose. So that's kind of my goal for next year. I have a plan that I'm going to implement uh, next Monday. I'm not going to start. I'm going to start it on January the 3rd of just really lowering my carbs a lot more than what I've been taking in and eating less and eating less sugar. So that's my plan. And continuing exercising, which 
I'm up to eight miles on my little exercise pedals. It's not really an exercise bike, it's exercise pedals. But it's non-stop movement for eight miles, so that's good. Okay, so I am going to read to you um, this book. Oh, it sounds like they're already doing fireworks. I hate fireworks. I'm sorry, but I hate to be truthful, but I do. I just hate them. They're noisy. I don't like them. Anyway, I like to watch them on TV or I like to watch them. Uh, I don't like to hear them around my house. I'm afraid my house is going to catch on fire. All right. Well, I guess somebody's celebrating. Anyway, as you come to the end of this year, take some time to look back and also to look ahead. Ask me to help you review the highlights of this year, hard times as well as good times. Well, I would say this year we didn't have as many hard times. We seemed to have everything that we needed. We seemed to have enough to pay bills, enough to eat. We seemed to have enough. We seemed to, God supplied what we needed. And we got a lot of what we wanted, whether we needed it or not. So I would say that um, it was a good year. Try to see me in these memories, for I have been close beside you every step of the way. I do see Jesus in these memories. I see him walking with me every day. And uh, just not having to feel alone. You know, I don't really get lonely anyway. I always have my son here. Our son. Our son. It's our son. I'm married. Our son here. And I have a cat. I have Gracie here. So I always have at least two people here. Well, one cat and one person. And then my husband, he comes in at night. But during the day, you know, I really don't know what being lonely is. Not that I want to. I'm quite content with my life right now. I don't have a lot of things that other people do. But that's okay. Uh, you know, we live pretty simply. So when you were clinging to me for help in the midst of tough times, I comforted you with my loving presence. And that's so true. Whenever we do have tough times. And I'm not saying that this was a perfect year. It wasn't. There were some pretty bad things that happened this year. But we've had worse. And uh, we've had years before where just smooth sailing the whole year. I was also richly present in circumstances that filled you, that you filled with great joy. That filled you with great joy. Sorry. I was with you on the mountain peaks, in the valleys, and everywhere in between. That is what I know about Jesus as my shepherd. Jesus is with me always. He meets me in the valley when I am at the lowest of lows. And he helps me every step up the mountain. And then when we get to the mountaintop, he's still with me. And I am praising, you know. Your future stretches out before you all the way into eternity. I am the companion who will never leave you. The God who knows every step of the way ahead. And that's so true. He does. He knows, he knows things that we don't. He knows things that are ahead that we have no idea of. And it's probably a good thing because not all things are good. <laughs> and not all things are great. And not all things that we go through are pleasant. But Jesus knows every step. And Jesus knows every detail, every heart the solutions, the outcomes. He already knows that. So we need to trust him. The joy that awaits you in paradise is inexpressible and full of glory. 
Wow, I see that so clearly, this picture behind me on... <laughs> oh, it's the wrong side on both. Oh, okay. <laughs> right behind me um, of the New Jerusalem coming down. It does. It's a beautiful picture, but I don't think it even compares to what we're going to experience. As you prepare to step into a new year, let heaven's light shine upon you and brighten the path just before you. So we don't know what the future holds, and I'm not on here to prophesy what I think is going to happen. I know we are getting close to Jesus coming back, but I have no idea what day that will be. Only God knows. Jesus says that only God knows, so only God knows that. So let's read the scriptures that go with this. Because this is one of my favorite things about this um, book is she puts the scriptures in there that go with it. And I've read this before on... Um, during this time, during this pray and share time. But I just kind of felt like it was a good way to end things this year. And then I'm going to start doing this, just this book, in the mornings. Like every morning at 8, which is going to be really hard for me. I'm going to have to get up at 7. I'm going to have to put makeup on in the morning, which I don't like that usually put my makeup on about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, sometimes later, sometimes at 10 till 7, I'm in there putting makeup on because I haven't been anywhere all day. Alright, uh, Psalm 1611 says this, you will show me the path of life in your presence presence is fullness of joy at your right hand are pleasures evermore so that was the ending of psalm 16 you will show me the path of life in your presence is fullness of joy at your right hand are pleasures forevermore amen and then uh psalm 48 40 one? Yeah, 4841 is the next one. And I am going to complete Psalms. I'm not dropping Psalms. I'm going to continue to do the Psalm study at night, uh, but maybe not every night of the week. I know I'm not here on Wednesdays, so I haven't figured out how I'm going to split it up yet. Psalm 48.14 says this, For this is God, our God forever and ever. He will be our God even to death. Yes, He will be. Isaiah 41.13 I may have to get me some reading glasses. It seems like it's getting harder to read. And I got me more light. <laughs> I got me a ring light for Christmas. So, I think that it's my... I probably need bifocals and I don't want them because I don't even wear my glasses hardly at all. Isaiah 41, 13. Yeah. I hear... They're out there doing firecrackers. Like it's not even midnight, it's 7.32. I can't wait. Okay, Isaiah 41, 13. For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, Fear not, I will help you. So fear not, I will help you. So he will help us. And then we got first Peter eight through nine.
still figuring things out about it's like if I look at my phone then it looks like I'm looking up if I look at this little light this little camera light maybe that's a better place to look but it, it's kind of blinding too first Peter oh yay it's it's hard for our child to go to sleep at night when the fireworks are going off. I forgot about that. You know, when I was a child, we didn't do fireworks for uh, New Year's Eve. New Year's. We just didn't. First Peter 1. I asked my husband, I said, when did we start doing fireworks for New Year's? And he said, since forever. And I said, I don't think so. I don't think we used to do them at all. Not for New Year's, for 4th of July always, but not New Year's. Okay, um, 1 Peter 1, 8 through 9. Uh... Whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Okay, that was 8 through 9. So, that has taken about 20-something minutes. So that's not as long as our usual pray and share. So the one in the morning is going to be, it's going to have to be shorter because I have more things to do in the morning than I do in the evenings. But this is the book. So join me if you can. I want a community type of comment so we can have discussion about it. I'm quite excited. I cleaned my desk off today. I filed away 2021. It's all gone. Except for one bill that's left. I've got to go get my car inspected and get my registration for my car. Other than that... Everything's paid up until the new ones start coming in, which I probably have some in my mailbox now that I haven't gotten. So anyway, it is going to be 2022 soon. So what are your prospects for 2022? Put them in the comments. What do you think? we are going to experience in 2022. I think it's going to be more and more of the same of what we're going through now with our government. And um, I just don't think that's going to change. I think it's only going to get worse. It's only going to line up more and more with God's Word all the time. Because God is trying to wake people up. He's trying to show them that um, they need to decide. People need to decide whether they are going to choose Jesus as their Savior or not. And it is by far the most important decision that you can make for your life. And a lot of people just keep putting it off. They just go, man, i got to get my life in order first. Well, you may not have that luxury to get your life in order. So why not invite Jesus to be your Savior and then let Him help you get your life in order because He will. He will go in and the things that do not please Him about you, they'll change and it won't be quite as painful as you trying to do it on your own. I know there's a lot of things that spiritually have changed in me since I got saved. There are things that I would not have put up with for five seconds.
before I got saved, that I have more patience, I have more grace for people, I have more forgiveness, because I know that God forgave me, and I know that His forgiveness is always available for me when I fail, and I do fail, I am not perfect, I, you know, I don't share a whole lot about me, but I am not, I do not see myself as that perfect Christian. I am learning. We are all here to learn. We are here to learn to love God with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And we are here to learn to love other people. We are here to accept Jesus as our Savior and to follow Him as close as we possibly can. And we're going to stray from time to time. He's going to have to go back and get us. And get us in line. Just like wandering sheep. But we are following him back to God. That is what we're doing. We're following him back to God. He knows the way back to God. Nobody else does. Nobody else does. There are not other ways. Jesus is the only way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through Him. And that is John 14, 6. And I'm learning some scripture this last year. I guess last year was kind of a continuation of expanded quiet time. So that has been really nice that I have more time to spend with God. So let's do a salvation message. We've been talking about it, so let's do it. Let's do, I don't even know if y'all can read that. I'm going to start doing that. If I do the camera up there, then it's straight. All right, I didn't cut it very well. I need to cut that. All right, God's invitation to his heaven. Have you ever been invited the time is now to respond to his invitation. You know, God keeps telling me that salvation and reconciliation are most important to him. That people get saved through Jesus. That people come back that have strayed away. That maybe weren't saved, thought they were saved, thought they were saved here, but they weren't saved here in their heart. He wants them back. He wants them to come back. So as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one, Romans 3.10. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23. God commandeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, Romans 5.8. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, Romans 6.23. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No, one, no man come unto the Father but by me. John 14, 6, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Romans 10, 9-11 For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10:13. So his heaven, as you can see in this picture behind me, his heaven is our reward. And John, this is a picture of John seeing heaven coming down. When John saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them, and be their God. Revelation 21, 2 through 3. So if you would like to accept Jesus as your Savior, then repeat this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I admit that I am a sinner. Please forgive me. I believe that you are God's one and only Son that came to teach, heal, love, and forgive.
You died on the cross for all sinners. You rose from the tomb on the third day. You ascended into heaven, and you will come back to usher your church into heaven. I confess you as my Savior, inviting you into my heart to live and reign forever. Thank you for the gift of salvation. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, if you invited Jesus into your heart to be your Savior, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. Your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And the angels are rejoicing. And if you would like to draw closer to God, then read his word every day and pray and praise. Pray for God to send you to a church where you could follow Jesus in baptism and have fellowship with other believers. To learn, to worship, to serve, to serve others. And so I am going to do God's blessing for you, and I am going to get off of here. I've already cooked dinner. I've already eaten dinner. But I had a stressful day yesterday. I had a very productive day today. I plan to put Christmas away tomorrow. Um, I look forward to 2022. I hope you'll meet me at 8 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to have to set my alarm until I get used to getting up at 7 again. All right, so this is a blessing from God, no, Numbers 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Just praying that next year brings more peace. Not false peace, but peace from Jesus. The peace that passes all understanding. That peace, that love, that joy, that peace. All of that. So, um, I'm going to say a prayer and I'm going to go. My son just came in here. Our son, he wants different entertainment. He's not, he's not pleased with what he has. God, we just thank you for this time that we can learn more about your word. We just thank you that we do have freedom right now. That we can even share your word. That we can share the gospel. We thank you for that. We just pray that you would give us the boldness to go out to share your truths and to share the gospel of Jesus more and more. I just pray for every family that comes here, God, that you would bless them, that you would protect them and provide for them. And that, God, if there's anybody that comes here that needs Jesus as their Savior, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so that they could be saved. God, you keep telling me salvation and reconciliation. And I do see that that is most important to you right now. So, God, just help us, lead us, let the Holy Spirit show us who needs Jesus and who, who needs to return to you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm sorry. You're distracting me down there. Okay. So, have an awesome rest of 2021 because at midnight, it's 2022. Ew. So much love from 2021. We're closing that door. Nobody can open it back up. And we're opening the door to 2022. And my name is Charm, and this is 
my ministry, Awesome Treasures Ministry, where I share God's truth out of His Word and the Gospel of Jesus. So much love and cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night. I